not just asking, is it a sin, but does it help me run? Do you see the difference in that question? Not just asking, is it a sin, but does it help me run? Does it help me in this race? Does this help me see Jesus more? I'm listening to a book right now um, called Atomic Habits. And when I was reading this, one of the things that stood out to me, when you think about every weight, is just the daily things that happen, the daily habits that we have that are either helping us move towards God or really causing us to move away from God and how we spend our time. And so I have an illustration of this, of just laying aside every weight, of being intentional with the time that we have, of not just asking, is it a sin, but does it help me run? Since 1908, are there any bike riders in here? Like actual riders? I see some people like road bike, like, okay. The Tour de France, I think, is happening right now. I saw, I think, an article yesterday. There's some people crashed because someone held a sign out too far. So here we go. This is about road bike riders and the British cycling team. Since 1908, this comes from Atomic Habits, British riders had won just a single gold medal at the Olympic Games, and they had fared even worse in cycling's biggest race, the Tour de France. In 110 years, no British cyclist had ever won the event. In fact, the performance of British riders had been so underwhelming that one of the top bike manufacturers in Europe refused to sell bikes to the team because they were afraid it would hurt sales if other professionals saw the Brits using that gear, okay? So we see the British cycling team Terrible. One gold medal in over a hundred years in the Olympics, no Tour de France victories, and people won't even sell them bikes. But they hired a new coach. David Brailsford had been hired in 2003 to put British cycling on a new trajectory. What made him different from previous coaches was his relentless commitment to a strategy that he referred to as the aggregation of marginal gains, which was the philosophy of searching for a tiny margin of improvement in everything you do. Brailsford said the whole principle came from the idea that if you broke down everything you could think of that goes into riding a bike and then improve it by 1%, you'll get a significant increase when you put them all together. So you see that? We're following? That if we can break each of these pieces down and see what are the pieces that go into riding a bike and just change them, just change them, just tweak them just a little, it'll have a long-term significant impact. So here's what it says. Brailsford and his coaches began by making small adjustments you might expect from a professional cycling team. They redesigned the bike seats to make them more comfortable and rubbed alcohol on the tires for a better grip. Uh, For me, wearing bike shorts is kind of, that's over the top though. But that's what they put, these new suits. Uh, They asked riders to wear electrically heated overshorts to maintain ideal ideal muscle temperature while riding and used biofeedback sensors to monitor how each athlete responded to a particular workout. The team tested various fabrics in a wind tunnel, had their outdoor riders switch to indoor racing suits, which proved to be lighter and more aerodynamic, but they didn't stop there. They hired a surgeon to teach each rider the best way to wash their hands, to reduce the chances of catching a cold. They determined the type of pillow and mattress that led to the best night's sleep for each rider. They even painted the inside of the team truck white, which helped them spot little bits of dust that would normally slip by unnoticed, but could degrade the performance of the finely tuned bikes. As these and hundreds of other small improvements accumulated, the results came faster than anyone could have imagined. Listen to this, it's phenomenal. Just five years after Brailsford took over, the British cycling team dominated the road and track cycling events at the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing, where they won an astounding 60% of the gold medals available. During the 10-year span from 2007 to 2017, the British cyclists won 178 world championships and 66 Olympic or Paralympic gold medals and captured five Tour de France victories and what is widely regarded as the most successful run in cycling history. Isn't that phenomenal? When you think about the coach came in and made these small tweaks that added up and made a huge difference in the overall success of these cyclers. So what's the analogy for us? What are things in your life that are weighing you down? What are some tweaks in the way that you spend your time? When you think about how this cycling team, 
leaned in to try and be better racers? Are we that earnest in our walk with God and wanting to seek after Him and want to know Him to make these changes, to make these tweaks in our lives? Because a winning athlete doesn't choose between good and bad. He chooses between better and best. Hey, thanks for watching. To find out more about Houston's First, you can subscribe to our channel or you can go to houstonsfirst.org.